24 hours later, the alcohol should look like this now. You know, a black layer of charcoal at the bottom and the clear liquid. Now if when you've done this after 24 hours it isn't quite done, you can just leave it a little bit longer. This is actually a bit longer than 24 hours, but, but you can do it in 24 hours. The two things you can do, you can either leave it a little bit longer or put a bit more clear in it and do the same process again. And it'll speed it up a bit. So what you need to do now is um, siphon this out into another clear bottle so that you leave the sediment behind and then you've got the finished alcohol. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this into three of these because that's the easiest thing for me. And then you want to keep them in the fridge. Uh, they, they shouldn't have to. If you've, if you've, um, you've sterilised the bottles every single time, you probably won't need to. But it does keep better in the fridge. It'll keep indefinitely in the fridge. So I'm going to re-bottle it into three of those. And then I'll come back and we'll end the video and I'll just talk about it. And uh, yeah, that's, that'll be the end then. Right, that's the end of the process then. So I've got about four and a half litres there. I would have actually had slightly more, but I had a bit of an accident at one stage and lost about 500 mil. And um, this one's not quite clear at the minute because it was what was at the bottom of the bottle and I managed to siphon through a little bit of the sediment. But that doesn't matter because that'll just settle and then you can just do it again. But you can see these two, how sort of clear they are. As for taste, uh, these ones have a slightly sugary taste and a slightly yeasty taste. Um, you soon get used to that. That is because I obviously didn't put enough of the, um, the charcoal in, the active carbon in. And uh, it was because at one stage as well, the heating broke down. So it meant it got too cold in here, which slowed down the process. So it didn't get rid of all the sugar. Which also means this probably isn't quite 20%. But when you taste it, well, I don't do the um, the gravity to test it because it's just too much bother for me. I don't need to. Um, if you just, you can tell how strong it is by tasting it. And these will always be, as long as you use the amount of sugar it says, these are always going to be around about between like 18 and 20%, you know, anyway. So, as for taste as well, like I said, yours may not taste like that because if you do this right and the process goes perfectly, it will just taste like, well, I don't know how to explain it, but it will just taste like alcohol, you know, half strength vodka. If you've ever had, there's a product called Vodcat, which is like a, they call it vodka schnapps, and it's just sort of flavourless alcohol that's twenty percent. If this has all gone perfectly it'll taste like that. You know, as long as the bottles was all clean, you used enough of the um purifying stuff and all that and all the sugar went, it'll just taste like alcohol basically, you know, like vodka, half drink vodka. Yeah, uh I'll talk about a couple of things while I'm here quickly. So how I drink this, I tend to, you can drink it like vodka, or what I tend to do is buy low alcohol cans of lager that you can get really cheap for like 25p, and then top them up with this, and it will make them into like a 5% pint, 6% pint, and that pint's cost you around about 35p, something like that, you know. Doesn't taste great, it's only going to taste as good as the quality of the cheap cans but you know it's, it's really cheap cans of lager you know a can of lager over here is about a pound you know for a cheap one from the shop you know so yeah you can make your own just buy like Asda or Tesco's value lager mix this in top pour it into a pint top this up you know put about four shots in just remember that each shot of this is half a unit so you can work out you know how much you're adding by doing it that way and another one other thing I might as well mention while I'm here I never do this but if you want to instead of using water you can use things like 
pure apple juice as your base. The only reason I don't do that is because it's gonna you gotta start buying five litres worth of apple juice, you know. I do it this way because this is the cheapest decent way you can make alcohol. Yeah, so that's it. That is um five litres of twenty percent homebrew, round about twenty percent homebrew. The quickest way you can make it. I might do a video of the easiest way, because there is an even simpler way to do this, but you miss out some of the stages. It just takes longer. This is the quickest. Yeah, and there's a, there's, there is a simpler, cheaper, easier way, but it probably takes two weeks longer. Rob, well, yeah, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. You know, you could make this in a sort of shit hit the man survival situation and have something to barter with, you know, people always buy alcohol, lots of uses for it, it can be turned into fuel, it can be drunk, it can be used for cleaning the wounds, stuff like that, because you, um, you can then turn this into moonshine, you know, by distilling it. Yeah, alright, hope you enjoyed the video, I may do a, another one, like I said, the easiest, quickest, uh, easiest, cheapest way, alright. Like that. Right, before you leave, if you ever wanted to support this channel, you can now via Patreon or by shopping at Amazon.com and Gearbest. There's more info below if you need that. Remember, if you want to get full notifications for this channel, click the bell. And uh, I'll see you later. Cheers.